World War I required an enormous amount of fuel. And France was the most hydrocarbon-starved country in Europe. The enormous number of continuously produced automobiles required more and more liquid fuel, which France historically did not have. And the military situation hindered the supply of oil and its products. It was not only France that suffered. The unleashed war hit the fuel supplies of many European countries hard. The French military ministry and the invention department urgently searched for a national fuel. It had to be cheaper than gasoline and not require changing engines. There had already been a lot of vehicles produced by that time, and no one wanted to redesign the engines en masse. France started looking for inventions and summon handymen. The first five gasifier tractors and five gasifier trucks took part in a competition held in Casablanca. The first gasifier truck went on a 140 kilometers long tour in French European territory in 1914 from Paris to Rouen. No particular success was achieved in creating a normally operating appliance powered with cheap fuel. The first gasifier bus was created. It began regular services between the above-mentioned cities of Paris and Rouen in 1916. And if there is a demand for the invention and it is possible to make money on it, there will be a person who will make it. Inventor George Imbert was talented in everything and came into the gasifier business having already built a plant to produce synthetic fuel from coal. And while many inventors failed or gave up, this man managed to bring transport gasifiers to a perfection that is almost impossible to surpass today. He made firewood-powered driving possible per se and many companies selling gasifier vehicles appeared at that time just as there are many smartphone manufacturers worldwide today. Let's go in order. To the best of my knowledge, Imbert was the first to patent the horizontal gasification principle, subsequently picked up by McDonald and perfected by Gowen Poulin and Transverse Transport Gasifiers. Gowen Poulin began his journey in wood-fired vehicles from this gasifier. He came to Paris in 1921, apparently for a competition, having covered 500 kilometers in his car with a gasifier. According to the data available on the web, it was apparently a transverse charcoal gasifier. An exact description of his device didn't reach us, or I could not find it, but the public and the business community were very interested in it. To give you a better idea of the difficulty faced by the inventors of those days, let me give you an example. In 1920, a 30-horsepower gasifier for a stationary engine with a gas cleaning and rinsing system weighed 3 tons. 300 kilograms of gas had to be constantly purified by water hourly, and there was no idea about how to hang it all on a vehicle and supply it with so much water. A completely different miniature system was required. Just as nine women cannot give birth to a child in one month, so an inventor, no matter how talented, cannot create a perfect gasifier in the shortest possible time. It took him 13 years, from 1920 to 1933, to create a perfect sand glass shaped firewood gasifier. In addition to his talent, he was supported by the state and received money from selling his licenses. He also owned a factory and a testing laboratory and hired designers. Let me show you how Umbert's transport gasifiers evolved. They were the industry's flagships. The diagram shows the evolution of gasifiers by year. Since 1921, the gasifiers have undergone many changes, and you can see how Umbert made a downdraft gasifier in 1926. In 1929, he improved it by heating the firewood hopper with exhaust gas. This improved the efficiency by making the gas less tarry. A check valve was installed to prevent smoke from escaping when the engine was stopped. The legendary hourglass-shaped firebox appeared in 1933. The same year Imbert flirted with the Mon order trying to remove moisture, but later it turned out that the fully heated hopper gives more advantages than the Mon order dumping fuel moisture. A weak point was discovered, cold air warped metal tuyeres while entering them. 
So in 1937, Imbert decided to feed air to each tuyere by a separate pipe. Imbert also patented another improvement not shown in the diagram. He surrounded his gasifier with another air heating cylinder and, thus, enabled using fuel with 35%, not 25% humidity. Of course, this is a summarized story not including many other improvements and experiments. A series of films could be made about them well exceeding this video. Let's go back to 1921. Imbert attracted attention by showing his successful gasifier. But the gasifier car competition held the next year, in 1922, was won by the British. Despite World War I being over, the French military remembered the gasoline shortage well. During the war, a liter of blood had literally to be given for a liter of gasoline. So, they continued funding the transport gasifier's development. Italy and island England, as oil-starved as France, initiated the wide use of gasifiers in their colonies. In addition to Imbert, other inventors also made transport gasifiers. For example, a customer could choose among 25 different types of gasifier vehicles in France in 1923. Mass production was already underway. But it was Imbert who received a French government order for a firewood gasifier in 1923. A year later, in 1924, the Lotar firewood downdraft gasifier appeared. One-fifth of France is covered with forests. There is plenty of wood, but no oil, a firewood gasifier is required. In 1924-1926, Imbert created a downdraft gasifier. It took three years from the initial order to a finalized prototype. But even this prototype was not particularly effective yet. It gave a lot of tar and consumed a lot of wood. The French customers were not happy. Inventors could not overcome firewood, the gas was too tarry. Charcoal and coal-fired gasifiers were mostly used. But firewood was much cheaper for the French state, so state orders for the invention continued. In 1923, when Imbert received an order from the French government, he also considered himself a patriot of Germany. So, he wanted to push the technology in his home country as well. In 1925, England stopped subsidizing solid fuel vehicles. English gasifiers had poor quality, and engines wore a lot. The British decided to fill gas and rubber bags on vehicle roofs from the street illuminating gas pipeline because this was the wood gas ancestor, but gasifiers were not abandoned for good. Several companies made gasifiers in the UK. The English tended to use hard coal and charcoal. Hardly any wood was used. World War I also hit the fuel supply of the island parent state. In July 1916, drivers discovered that they could not buy gasoline. Only chosen ones obtained it on carts. A solution was found in the form of gas bags or cylinders on the roofs and illuminating gas from the municipal gas pipeline. The bags were made of rubber and silk or other fabric. They could be repaired like a bicycle wheel. On cars, bags were placed on wooden beams resting on bumpers. The bags were attached to the roof with rings and straps. Fabric bags were cheaper than metal cylinders and the deflation indicated how much gas was consumed. Today, natural gas filled in cylinders has a declared calorific value of 7,600 kilocalories. The illuminating gas had 4,200 kilocalories, i.e. it was 55% weaker than natural gas. Sometimes bus cylinders were covered with fairing housings that hid the crude construction. Advertising could be placed on such fairings. The terrible aerodynamics of such bulkheads, of course, increased fuel consumption. The tank could be torn from the roof at excessive speed, so a maximum speed of 50 km per hour was recommended. And, of course, low bridges and spans were a big problem. Smoking was strictly forbidden at gas stations, but unfortunately, the illuminating gas pipelines exploded here and there in the UK. Early reports stated that one person was killed and several were injured. Falling glass was responsible for many of the injuries. Fifty shops had their windows blown out. Police kept the area clear in case of danger from falling masonry, which might have been rendered unsafe by the force of the concussion. 
Although the UK went the way of the inflatable gas bags, there were 1,500 transport gasifiers on its roads by 1939, and several companies were producing gasifiers of their own designs. Cartoonists could not overlook the bulky cylinders. For example, buses with such gas bags were used in China until the late 1990s. Gadgets of the last war emerge as the rigors of the present conflict increase. Things are bad indeed when the old gas bag is resurrected to supply the motive power beneath your bonnet. However, to mention one of the good points of this antique invention, you can smoke without fear of touching off the gas. The bag contains the equivalent of one and two-third gallons of petrol, and if you wanted to drive 50 miles or so, they'd have to heighten the bridges for you. 